But this is something we need to be conscious of, okay? Because it is in our human nature. Let me emphasize the human nature. It is in our human nature. We want to be liked. Yes. That, that, that is natural, and that's the right word. That is natural for us to desire to be liked, to be accepted by people, right? Think about the account. If you know the, and I pray that you do, you know the account of the man who had been born blind mm -hmm. that Jesus heals in John chapter 9. Right. And now if you don't know that, please make yourself a note. Go read that this week. Okay? And by the way, we have a study, on, <laughs> a, a study that I've done or a sermon I've done about that, and it's worth listening to. It yes, may be a biased opinion, but that's the truth. <laughs> because what happened was this man who had been born blind, and the, the apostles, as they were walking away from the temple, they're saying, you know, why, they're asking Jesus, why was this man born blind? Because of their theology at the time, they're saying, was it because his parents sinned, or was it because he sinned? Because they believed in generational curses that came from the Word of God, from scriptures, right? Mm -hmm. That got wiped away when, when Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again, so you get a new father. So he, and that, I promise you, that father has no sin to pass on to you, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens is, because all of a sudden, this man who had been begging at the temple, day after day after day, all of his life, I mean, he was born blind, right? Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, people see him, and he's walking around, he can see. I mean, this is an amazing thing. It's a, it's a really an incredible testimony. But what happens is, that upsets the Pharisees, that upsets the religious leaders, because Jesus healed him, and he's proclaiming. He doesn't even really know who Jesus is at that point, but he is proclaiming that, that he was healed. So the Pharisees bring him into the temple and literally put him on trial. Questioning him. Questioning him. It's worth reading. And what happens is they call his parents in, and they say to his parents, is this, is this your son? Is he born blind? Was he born blind? So you know what happens? His parents back off. They said, ask him, he's of age. Because they were afraid of the religious leaders. Mm -hmm. They were afraid of being put out of the temple by standing up for Jesus. Right. The lesson there is if you're going to be, if you are going to be prepared to stand for the Lord, you had better be prepared to stand alone. People will desert you. The only one that will stand with you is Jesus. Is Jesus Christ. Because he will never leave you nor forsake you. That's right. But it's, look at Jesus. What happened to people who were closest to him? The apostles. When he was put on trial. When he went to the, was going to the cross. Where were the disciples? I mean, all except the only one that mentions it was there at the crucifixion was John. Where were the others? Scattered. Okay. So... Even those closest to you, like the parents of that man born blind, may not stand with you. Just because you have counted the cost and are willing to pay the price does not mean that others will. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right. But you better have counted the cost and you better be willing to pay the price. If you're going to stand for the Lord, like I said, you need to be prepared to stand alone. And then you will find, as the blind man did when Jesus, who came to seek and to find him, to save him, that which was lost, right? Mm -hmm. Found the blind man who would never have to walk alone again. That's right. uh -huh. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.6 God will not leave you nor forsake you. That's what he said, right? It says and he in Hebrews 13, 5, it quotes that, that he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And as I said, Jesus certainly experiences. In John chapter 6, and this is an important thing, Jesus was teaching, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you what, his word can be hard. Yes. Hard as a rock. Mm -hmm. The word is a rock. That's right. It says, when many of his disciples heard what he was teaching, or heard it. They said, it's a hard saying. Who can listen to it? John 6.60. And it says in John 6.66, 6, 
6, 6. It says, and after this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. They thought that his word was too difficult. The word of God, that rock, can be hard, mm -hmm. but it'll never be too difficult. Because the Lord will give you the grace you need to deal with it, okay? You just have to have that desire and that obedience. Because he even said, God said that he's searching the earth to and fro, and he will strongly support those whose hearts are committed to him. Amen. Who are wholly committed to yes. him. Right? From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, I will praise his holy name. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, I will praise, I will praise his name. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. From this time forth and forevermore, I will bless my holy Lord. From this time forth and forevermore, I will bless, I will bless the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.